13, if you would. John chapter 13. Is this thing working right now? Good. All right. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. And let's uh, return there and let the young people go with Miss Wilma. And then, of course, right after church tonight, everyone's welcome to stay for some good food out in the other room. John chapter 13. John chapter 13 and verse... Number 34, John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have loved one to another. And then chapter 15 and verse number 12, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Verse 17, these things I command you that you love one another. So three different times he's commanded that we love one another. Of course, he's talking to a Christian. He's talking to the believers and he's telling us that he expects us to love one another. Today at the nursing home, I was preaching on John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we know that that uh, that love that was demonstrated was love that was sacrificial. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And so that's the, the ideal love here, the kind of love, the sacrificial love that we're to have. And so that's the love that we should be demonstrating to, to the world, but we should also recognize the need for being that kind of loving Christian to one another. Let me tell you something. One of the things that the devil does, and he does it in me, and I know he does it in other people, and that is, is to get us to not love one another. And it's very ugly. And it's wrong. Okay? It's just wrong. And what happens is, is that the world's not impressed with that. That doesn't speak to the world, and that doesn't, that doesn't do it. In fact, Jesus said, by, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Um, this is not just a a, a natural thing. Uh, naturally, we should love uh, our fellow man. I mean, our fellow man is, is a human being that we should be aware of, and we should be concerned of, but it's more than just even love for ourselves, but the kind of love that, that God demonstrated in his love toward us. The Bible says that he was the sacrificial lamb, that he was the lamb that like the Passover lamb sacrificed for us. We were talking about the, the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant. And, and every year there was blood. I mean, just a lot of blood. Innocent lambs, innocent animals that were killed and slaughtered just so that, so that we could have an atonement, so that mankind could visualize an atonement for sin. Jesus Christ came and took that. And when he died on the cross and paid the sin debt, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And he died on the cross and paid that whole sin debt on the cross. And what a relief to the animals. I mean, what a real, and, and the whole Old Testament system, I mean, they had to have a, a special gutter system just to drain all that uh, blood and sacrificial fluids that, that were part of that. What a, 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 a sad system that was. What a relief to the animals themselves when Jesus came and died on the cross to take, and by the way, animal sacrifice is demonic today. No one should be doing that because Jesus stopped that. And he made a, a complete finish of that. And, and that's why when he cried, it is finished, the veil ripped in two. So we have access to the Father. We, we, we go to him through the blood of Christ. And so the Bible shows us that his love was demonstrated in how he loved us. And his, our love to, to, towards others is, is demonstrated by how he loved. In Ephesians chapter number four, it says this. Ephesians chapter number four, it says... Verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption, and let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Ray didn't preach on forgiveness today. I kind of wish he would have, but it's all right. That the Lord led him in a different direction. Let me tell you something. You and I need to practice forgiveness like we got forgiveness. And we're not doing it. 
We're not always doing it. Listen, we're quick to throw each other under the bus. We're quick to, to uh, uh, tell on each other or to make ourselves look better by saying something about someone else. And that's wrong. We ought not do that. The Bible tells us here that Jesus demonstrated a love for us which was different than the world. You know, my, my neighbors are good people. I hope they think I'm good people. My neighbors are good people. and they. But you know what? This isn't just a neighborly kind of niceness. This is, this is a demonstration of tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. How many, don't raise your hand, but how many have ever sworn Jesus' name in a curse word? You don't have to raise your hand. <clears throat> but thank you for doing it. You think about that. You curse the person who died on the cross for you. Okay? And, and, <clears throat> And people do that all the time. Uh, I heard someone just saying it the other day. I, I don't even think they know what they're saying. I'm not trying to be arrogant about it. I just don't even think they know what they're saying. But you think about that. And, and this kind of love that's demonstrated for us. Now think about the fact that not only did, did he die on the cross, but he's God so he could look ahead and see how lousy you and I are. And he died for us anyway. When he was about to be crucified the night before, when John Mark was being chased, he washed the disciples' feet. I think that's amazing because he washed, he washed Judas's feet. And Judas was going to betray him, right? He washed Peter's feet and Peter was going to betray him. Judas was going to sell him. Peter was going to deny him. He washed those guys' feet. All of them betrayed him and left him. All of them left when they saw what was happening and realized they had no control. They left and he washed their feet. But when you and I get saved, what is salvation? Salvation is when we trust in Jesus Christ and we get that forgiveness that he offers and we get saved. There's a new nature. There's a new nature in us that we, we can't explain. There's a new nature that produces a new kind of love because we're a, we're a part of a new family. I think the Slagles know who I'm talking about. There's a, a, a lady in heaven now, but for years she was a chiropractor. She was in her 90s before she quit practicing. And she told me she got saved when she was 17. And uh, she, she said, the one thing I noticed about me, she said, I noticed that I could love people I used to not like at all. You know, after I got saved. And let me tell you something. When you get saved, there's a new nature that wasn't there before. And you can love your fellow man because they're your fellow man. You can have compassion and pity for people who, who are suffering or people who have a need. But there ought to be something special about the Christian brother. You ought to just have a special interest and compassion for someone who is a Christian. And there's just, there's something different there. Listen. We're all related. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17 that he's made of one blood all the nations. So we're all distant brothers. And people will talk about family. Family is everything. You know, I, I understand what they mean when they say family is everything. But understand, understand something. One blood, from one blood, we are all, we're all connected. But you know when we die, that blood goes into the ground. And humanly speaking, that blood ceased to exist. And I don't mean to be unkind, but there's people, and maybe people in this room, you think family's everything, but when uh, 200 years from now, if your family's not saved, if you're not saved, you won't be together. I mean, if you're in hell, you won't even know you're together. You, you won't be able to see each other. And, and there, so understand that just human nature, human beings, they're just temporary. But what's special is when you get saved. Because when you get saved, you are permanently related. And it doesn't matter if you die, your spiritual being goes to heaven. And that's a permanent relationship. Miss Wilma she has a good habit. She says, Brother Larry. Brother Slagle. She, you know, that's just because that's what they are. We're, connect, we're, we're permanent. We're stuck with Larry whether we like it or not. And so there's something special about that because we're not just connected by, by family. And so when someone says family is everything, remind them 
that's that only goes as far as you're going. What's real family is when you get saved. Have you have you ever met someone that was a complete stranger, but you found out they were a Christian, and you guys just had a connection? It's because it's like you met a distant cousin. It's like you ran into an old, and why? Because you are related spiritually. There's some. There's a connection. You're part of the same family. Last summer, it was the night of the uh, fireworks at Mount Rushmore. You know when Trump was was up there and the governor was up there. I was on the backside. I was just. I could see George Washington's face, his side profile, and I could hear everything going going on. Of course, I was just on the backside as a bus driver, waiting for it all to get done. But I, I, there was a guy. He he he's a bus driver from. Sturgis. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. We're just sitting there talking. And, and, and so I, I pulled out a tract and, uh, John or Bruce Delang was just here. And so I had a bunch of tracks and I pulled out a track. I said, here, I want to give this to you. I said, have you ever talked about, you know, have you ever thought about salvation? Do you know Christ is your savior? Oh, I'm a Christian. And then boom, we just started to start talking about being saved. And he just was so excited. He started asking me lots of questions. I told him I was a pastor and he, he said, you know, he said, I'd love to have a bunch of more of these because I, I need to give these out. I had a whole lunchbox full of them, you know, because I, I figured I'd see somebody. And so I handed all of them to him. I haven't seen that guy since, but we had a connection and it was the Christian family. And you'll, you'll come across that one from time to time. And it's like, wow, we're connected. We're of the same family. They're my brothers in Christ. And uh, we have, there's just a connection there. You know, uh, I didn't do it. I hadn't, didn't plan it. But uh, today, uh, someone put a large offering in the plate for Ray. You know why? That's, his, that's their brother. That person that gave that, that's their brother. And they have a connection to him. And they're burdened about him. And there can be a blessing to him. He might need it now that his truck's falling apart. But that's a blessing that we, ha that we have that connection. And that's what Christian family is all about. Look with me over in 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. You know, one of the ways you can tell if you're a Christian is if you love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. And know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. What did Jesus say? He said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And I am sure there are people in this room, I would give my life for so-and-so. I would lay down, I have laid down my life. I have seen others. Now, listen, this morning I was saying that we have to die daily. You know, it's funny how I'm, I'd be willing... I, I would give my life for my wife. I would step in front of a bullet for my wife. And then tomorrow I'm arguing with her about something. I mean, the idea of dying for your, for, is, is maybe dying to self. Now, I'm not saying that I'm supposed to just let my wife be in, be in charge. But dying to self. Dying to selfishness. And, and, and laying aside our self-petty issues that we, we sometimes want to fight for. And, and, and we end up hating one another and despising one another. That's not right. We need to love one another. First John chapter 3, now look at chapter 4. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that... God gave, sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, to be the sacrifice and substitute for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen him do testify the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Now look, drop down here in verse number um, 18. There is no fear in love, 
But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I was talking to someone the other day about how scared I was to stand to get in front of people. I I I I don't like to be in front of people. Uh, and, and so out of, out of God's sense of humor, he made me a preacher. Isn't that funny? But you know why I don't like to be in front of people? Because of fear. Afraid of what they're going to think. I mean, isn't that why? Some people, somebody said, I don't know how long ago it was, but somebody said that they would rather die than have to give a public speech. Out of fear. You know what I figured out when God told me that I was supposed to preach and I, I, he wants me to do this? I figured out something. You know why I'm afraid? Because I'm afraid of what they think about me. You know why that is? Because I'm worried about me than I'm more, I'm more worried about me than I am about them. Right? I love me more than I love them. And God was showing me that's your problem. That's why you're afraid. Because there's no fear in love. See, if you love, you'll stop being afraid. Isn't that why we have a hard time talking to people about Jesus? Because we're more afraid of what they think about us. There's no fear in love. And so when we are demonstrating fear, when we're demonstrating fear, we're not loving. Courage stems from love and being afraid is not loving that isn't loving i've been talking about teachers and how that we need to have more teachers some of you are like that scares me to death you know why because it's scary i agree i mean there's a girl this morning i finally said you need to sit down right here and you're going to sit in that chair because I've heard too many people call your name in the last 10 minutes. So you're going to sit in that chair right there and you need to learn to listen and be quiet and settle down. You know what that goober did 10 minutes later? I, got, I came back and I said, all right, come on, you can come in now. And she came, she sat down with Mr. Pryor and she came up to me and she said, Pastor Matt, I made you this. And she handed me a Valentine's card. You know what? That girl drives me nuts sometimes. And I'm sitting there with this Valentine card in my lap and Bob says, what a goober. Because you know what? You know what she drew on the inside here? You know what she drew on the inside? She drew a picture of this church building with all kinds of hearts. Listen to me. She, she gets love here. She, she was at my house yesterday sledding with some kids. We have to stop loving ourselves and love other people. Some people. Some people get mad because you don't love them as much as they love themselves. That's not real love. That's not going to do them any good. But on the other hand, there's some, there's some young people. There's some adults they're, they're looking for love, and, and, and we're going to read it in a minute. We're just about ready to read it. God is love. We already read it earlier in verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Psychiatrists will tell you that most people, what they really need more than anything else is they need love. Psychiatrists will tell you that most people really, when, they, when you peel all the layers back, they just want to be loved. I was talking to someone the other day they, about, about adoption and, and about there's, there are people who've been adopted and an adoptee has a hard time sometimes because they don't feel like they were ever loved. Right? I mean, does that make sense? And, it, and it's a struggle. It's like a psychological struggle with them. They got this issue. Listen, when my father and mother have forsaken me, the Lord will take me up. Psalm 27. God is love. And isn't it interesting that the psychiatrists tell you that what the world says they need is love. And the answer is God. God is love. So then us who, who claim to have God, sometimes we don't demonstrate it very well. I told her, hey, 
I'll make sure I get you something on Wednesday. The last thing she said to me is, you better write it down so you don't forget. <laughs> I won't forget. Listen, I won't forget because that girl, I'm going to make sure I don't forget and put this away where I won't lose it. I know that girl needs me to not forget. <clears throat> and we, we need to recognize that, that a lot of times we're afraid. Well, uh, let's, go, let's just say this. <clears throat> we're afraid to love because we're afraid to get hurt. We're afraid of rejection. But there's no fear in love. It doesn't matter if we get rejected. Was Jesus rejected? But he loved anyway. He got betrayed, but he loved anyway. We got to learn to love people and, and not be afraid and not be full of fear. We love him because he first loved us, not the other way around. So verse 20 says, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth his brother whom he hath seen, loveth not his brother whom he hath seen. How can he love God whom he hath not seen? You say you love God, but you hate your brother. This commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. There's all kinds of stuff that goes on in our, in our lives. Things that happen that are kind of irritating and frustrating. But if we're not loving, we're missing it. Verse 5, or chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. You love, you love God because he gave you Jesus. You love the others who, got, who found Jesus. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. If you really love, love people, it's, it, you're going to keep God's commandments and obey what he says to do. Let me tell you something. Keeping God's commandments, a lot of people will accuse you of not being loving. Let me ask you a question. Who was more loving, Moses or Dathan and Abiram? Dathan and Abiram said, Moses, you and Aaron are taking up too much responsibility on yourselves. And you guys are, are being too much of the big shots here. Who was more loving, Dathan and Abiram or Moses? Moses, you know why? Moses was doing the hard thing. Moses was obeying God, and by obeying God, he was loving the people. Sometimes loving the people is not telling the people what they want to hear, but telling them what God said. If you really love your kids, you spank them and you tell them what God said, not what they want to hear. You tell them what God said, and you, you tell them, I, you might have to tell them as a parent. You might just have to say, you know what? I don't like spanking. I don't even think it's nice, but God said to. Not beating, not abusing, but spanking. And, and little Johnny and Sally might look up at you and say, yeah, but my best friend never gets a spanking. His mom loves him way more than you love me because she never spanks him. And you say, but my God says, if you love the Lord, you'll chasten your kids. And the Bible says, if you love your children, you spank. But that's not what the world says. Right now, the world says, if you love, you'll give us everything we want. No, if you love the children of God, you'll keep his commandments. You'll hold to the line. And later on down the line, your, your child, you, the people in your life will thank you for holding the line. Now, let me um, point out something else. If you read the bulletin this morning, this little story of a porcupine. It was the coldest winter ever. Many animals died because of the cold. The porcupines, realizing the situation, decided to group themselves together to keep warm. This way they covered and protected themselves. But the quills of each one wounded their closest companions. After a while, they decided to distance themselves from one another and they began to die alone in the frozen cold. So they had to make a choice, either accept the quills of their companions or disappear from the earth. Wisely, they decided to go back to being together. They learned to live with the little wounds caused by the close relationship with their companions in order to receive the warmth that came from the others. This way they were able to survive. 
The best relations are not the ones that bring together perfect people, but when each individual learns to live with the imperfections of others and can admire and encourage the other person's good qualities. You know what? You and I are like a bunch of porcupines. We are. And you better be careful. Listen to me. You better be careful that you don't decide that their porcupine quills are so bad, you just don't want them around anymore. <laughs> Sometimes, and today was one of those times where some guys, they just have a hard time with counting the offering. It's computer program, so you got computers that don't always do the right thing. And you got all this different stuff coming in. You're trying to get it all figured out. And you got a missionary and you got a Valentine's dinner and things. Listen to me. I'm not going to complain because at least we got offering that needs counted. At least we got somebody that wants to count it. Right? So let's not, let's not lose focus of the big picture here. Sometimes I come, this is my pet peeve. I come to the church. I park. Harmony, I come and I park. You're probably the ones doing this. And somebody has moved the orange cones out of line. It's like a wave. Sometimes I'll find an orange cone way over there because someone drove over it and drug it clear around the room, around the, the drive, and then dropped it off out in the middle of the road. It's like, does anybody not know what reverse is? I mean, you got to... Frank just bought four brand new ones to replace the ones that got run over. Now, you know what? I get irritated with that. It, it's not a big deal, but, it, some, but you know, I got to stop. The Bible says, if you're going to keep the ox, you got to clean the crib. I mean, do you want to shovel the manure in the crib or do you not want an ox anymore? Right? I mean, we got, we got these kids and sometimes they are goobers. But do you want these nice little Valentine's cards or not? <laughs> do you want them to grow up? I mean, we got a young lady that's here tonight. Hadn't been in here a while. Used to be in our youth group. That's a blessing right there. Do we put up with stuff or not? And uh, we have to realize that God's done, done something special as a church. He has given us opportunity and Hebrews chapter 10 talks about it. Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, it says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. You know what my goal is? This, this girl that I've been talking about tonight, the one that I sat in the chair this morning, I, I this is my wish. But it's a, it's going to it's a merit. It's going to take a miracle. But this is my wish. This is my wish that one day she is a, a charming young lady, serving the Lord, standing up here singing for the Lord, and somebody that maybe he moved away and is, hasn't been in our church for several years says, "Who's that?" And we say, "That's," and they go, "Ooh." That's that's that would be a blessing. But you know what? We got to consider one another for, to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. I'm thankful you came tonight. And I hope that you're encouraged by others that came tonight. And I hope that you're encouraged that there are people who still are here. Like for Tanessa who's here tonight. I hope that she's encouraged that we're still here and that people are still keeping this place going. Because you know what? This is enemy country. You say, what do you mean? We're getting surrounded by the enemy. And we need each other. Not to forsake yourselves as you see the day approaching. The days are coming when there's more uh, the unsaved ungodly crowd than there is the godly and we need one another and we need to encourage one another and you know what's cool about church we we get to see baby christians grow up not just little kids but baby christians that get saved as adults too 
And we get to see them mature slowly. A week ago, Matt asked Dallas to pray. Matt, Dallas, or uh, Sean and Tyler and Dallas are all sitting on the front row. I'm standing right about here. And Matt says, Dallas, why don't you pray for us tonight? And you could hear like the whole, uh, 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 mm. wasn't that a blessing to listen to him pray? You know, um, adult, adult lambs don't sound the same as baby lambs, but they're both a blessing and they're, and it's a blessing to hear. It's a blessing to hear Treg pray. It's a blessing to hear younger Christians pray. It's a blessing to hear some of these young men pray. And, and of course, it's a blessing to hear the older Christians pray. But it's encouraging to see what God's doing. And we realize, you know what, it's a blessing. This is what it's supposed to be. Different people getting saved different times and different ages and stages of their life. That's what God wants. Now, you know what else is, is awesome about loving one another? It's kind of practice for, for eternity. You know, it's kind of silly when we say that we are Christian brethren. And, and by the way, even though we are a local church in Custer, and there's different churches in different parts of the world, there's only one heaven. And and how many of you right now can think of a Christian, don't raise your hand, but how many of you can think of a Christian that is just kind of hard to like? Don't point at me, stop that. How many of you can think of a Christian right now and, 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 and you think they're probably saved, but they're hard to like? Now listen to me, you and they are going to the same heaven. I know what you're thinking. I hope I'm on a different subdivision. Listen, truthfully, we need to recognize that if we say we're going to the safe heaven, we, we need to learn to appreciate. I was at Pier the other day. I was with some people. I know that we're Christians. They might not necessarily agree with me on everything. I would agree with them on everything. But we could appreciate that we were saved. We were Christians. Um, I listened to our public utilities commissioner, um, Nelson. Is that right? Uh, what's his first? Chris. Chris Nelson. They gave him a topic to preach on. I mean, to talk about. He preached. He used a different Bible version. But other than that, I'm telling you, I, I loved everything he had to say. It was encouraging. And I, I shook his hand and told him I appreciated hearing from him. We, on one hand, we need to try to encourage one another. And if Chris and I ever had a conversation, I'd tell him why I use this version and not that version. However, I would try to encourage him, not discourage him. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to the same heaven. We need to love one another be, and be thankful. And when you're out, in, listen, if you're Ray Martinez and you're out in, in the middle of Rosebud, you're just thankful for any Christian you come across because they're few and far between. And I don't know about you, but I would, I would love to spend an hour with a godly person who happened to be very poor than with an unsaved person who happened to be rich. I'd get more out of the conversation with a godly person who might not be anything in anybody's eyes than to spend time with someone the world thinks is important. Because the truth is, if they're not saved, they're, we're not going to the same place. But if we're saved, we're on the same page. We're headed in the same direction. And to love one another as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And that includes dying. And that's what the preacher was saying this morning. Dying to myself. Dying to what I want and my own desires. See, we all have this problem. I'll tell you something. And, and next month, you're going to meet Hannah's boyfriend. Hannah's coming home for spring break. Hannah's boyfriend's coming home also for spring break. He called me last week. I don't even know if he wants me to say I know they don't want me to say all this. He called me, but this is how... This is how he thinks, and I'm thankful for it. He called me a while ago. He said, Pastor, would it be okay if I considered Hannah my girlfriend? 
Now, I'm kind of like almost laughing on the phone because, duh, man, you guys have been talking to each other for quite some time, you know. But officially, okay, sure, officially. So then they posted a picture on Facebook. So then last week, he calls and says, Pastor, I'm going to be going down to where Hannah's at. I prayed about this, and I, and I, and I think I know what I'm doing, but I, would, you, would you mind if I told Hannah that I loved her? I said, I said, I don't mind. I, and honestly, I mean, I kind of figured that was coming. It's Valentine's weekend, right? But I told him, I told him, I said, you know what? Years ago, I heard a preacher say this and I never forgot it. He said, usually when a young man says, I love you, what he really means is I love me and I want you. I said, I know that because I used to be a younger man. And typically we love, what we really mean is we love how you make me feel. I said, I'm just being honest with you as a guy. And he said, yeah, I, I think, he said, I understand that, or I think I do. And I said, and, and when I got married, I thought I loved my wife. But after being married, I found out how little I loved her at the beginning compared to now. And my dad told me that would be the case. You don't really understand love. And uh, that, that's just it, isn't it? We, we, we all love ourselves. And we'll throw each other under the bus as opposed to throwing ourselves under the bus, we'll throw somebody else under the bus if it'll help us to look good. Stop that. If you, if you have a Christian brother or sister in the church or maybe somewhere else that uh, there's something wrong, take care of it to the best of your ability. Don't put it off. Because you're hurting everybody when you do that. Did you hear what Ray said this morning? There was someone in his life he had to go to and talk to. And there's, there's times where maybe you can't do any more than you've done. But listen to me. On your end, there ought to be the ability to communicate. On your end, there ought to be the ability to go, be, go out of your way to communicate and to be there when they want to talk. And to let them know that you're willing, to, that you'd like to talk. And to be loving and forgiving. But we're afraid. Because we're afraid because we're not loving. Perfect love casts out fear. And we're afraid to approach a situation. We're afraid to go there because we're afraid of, what we, of our feelings getting hurt. That's wrong. I'll tell you why I was afraid to, to love I was, I was afraid to ask a girl for a date. Rejection, right? Afraid to, afraid to spank a child? Rejection. Afraid to put your foot down? Rejection. Spouses? Rejection. Listen, if you really love, you're going to obey God and, rather than man. And obeying God might be rejection, but you're loving and that's... We used to have leaders in this country that did the right thing, even if people didn't like it. Now we take a poll for everything to see if everybody likes it before we make a decision. That's not loving. And if you love, you're going to do the right thing. And you're going to answer to God and know that you're right with him for doing the right thing. We need to love one another. And I do think, I do think that this young man is more level-headed and spiritual than maybe even I was at his age, probably. But he's young. But you understand how that we all, we think we love. But, and, and I'm not picking on anybody here. But I can look out in this room right now. And we, we think we understand. And Ray said that somebody said to him the other night, I thought I had it figured out. But after your message, I don't think I got it figured out yet. You know what? You're, you're, we're human. And, and I, I don't think I have love figured out yet. But I'm learning. 
and I'm starting to realize and learn and be thankful and grateful. And uh, when you love yourself, it'll come out and it'll be embarrassing. You'll, want, you'll fight for your rights and you'll fight for your way. But when you say, I die to self and I lay down my life for my friends, I'm letting what I want go and I'm letting God be in charge, that's when you're loving. I think a lot of pastors, I think a lot of parents, I think a lot of school teachers and leaders and communities and politicians and presidents love themselves more than the people they're supposed to be serving. And they're doing damage. If you love the people you're supposed to lead, you 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 be self-sacrificial. You sacrifice your your the praise that you could have had had you just done it the way they wanted it done. You self-sacrifice whatever it is, and you you give up, and you love others even if they don't understand it. I'm thankful for every spanking I got. There's a couple of them I didn't deserve. But I'm thankful for those too because there's a whole bunch I did deserve and I never got. And when, when, when Caleb was just a little squirt, I'd had him in the, in the push cart at Walmart and there'd be a boy on the floor. He'd be throwing a fit because he wanted that toy and his mom wouldn't get him that toy or whatever, and he's just throwing a fit and blah, blah, blah. So then she gives him the toy, and he slams the toy on the floor, you know, and, and, and Caleb and I are just over there, and I said, Caleb, does that look happy? Does he look very happy? And Caleb's just staring at him, like, man, what's wrong with you? Sometimes it's good for those kids to see, you know what, that's not happy. That's not happy. And I don't, I don't know that Caleb... He, he's a tough guy, right? So I don't know that he's ever just said, Dad, thanks for being tough on me. But I know they appreciate it. I got a sweet card for my daughter two weeks ago on my birthday. And uh, she said, Dad, you're still the man in my life. Until you hand me off and say, I do, you're still the man in my life. That's why I was like, sure, go ahead and tell her. I know who's really the man in her life. Listen, it's it not easy. It's not easy to do the right thing. But if you're going to love, you're going to do the right thing. If you're, you're going to love, you're going to self-sacrifice. Shane, I'm sure sometimes Abby looks at you. Do the right thing. And you guys don't give him grief when he does the right thing. Harmony, somebody loves you enough to take care of you. And that's a blessing. And uh, I, I'm not a great pastor, but I'm learning to love and, it, and it, it helps to do the right thing. When you're loving right, it helps to do the right thing. And we learn it from Jesus because he's the example. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. To lay down our life for our friends. Now, it, I am not going to hold this against Ray. If Ray ever moves and goes to a different place, I don't think anybody would blame him. But right now, nobody, nobody out there realizes what he's doing. Nobody out there realizes what he's doing, what he's giving up. But maybe one day they will. Maybe one day in heaven, someone will explain it to them. But we need to give ourselves for other people. When we have Saturday visitation, it's a time to go out and talk to people. When we're out and about in our community, it's a time to talk to people. When we're getting served by a waiter or a waitress, I, I talked to a waiter yesterday and a waitress today. They both need the gospel. They need to be, to be kind. And it doesn't matter if they messed up my order. They need me to be kind to them. And we need to show God's love. And then right here in church, we need to be loving 
to one another and provoke to love and to good works and be thankful for each other. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the Bible. Lord, we thank you for Jesus dying on the cross and being loving to us, sacrificing himself and allowing himself to be crucified. Lord, help us to love one another. I pray for anyone that might not be saved, that they would get saved, that they would see their need to be born again and to be forgiven. And those of us that call ourselves Christians, help us to see the things that are ugly in our life that you want us to get rid of, that we would love one another, that we would be more loving and, and gracious and humble. Thank you for that young lady who comes every Sunday and she's got certainly got a lot of issues, but she's She's got some needs that are obvious and she, she needs attention. Help us to love her and let her know that she's loved. Thank you for the others. Thank you for the mom that came today. Help us to be loving to them. And help us to never look at people as a problem and a drag. Help us be concerned for the people who aren't uh, in church today. Help them to be encouraged and get back here I pray that you would work in the hearts and minds of every one of us help us to be right with you help us to say no to our pride and to die to self and to lay down our lives for the brethren in Jesus name amen